Hello, everyone. Welcome to our September webinar. It's great to have you join us today. My name is Peter. I'm a product manager here at Auto. I'm joined by Veronica, one of our other product managers, uh, who will be presenting the second half of today's webinar. And Lachlan from our sales team will be manning the chat today. So as we go through, um, please send any questions or feedback you have straight into the chat. And Lachlan will be there to help you out. Um, a reminder that we will send out the recording of today's webinar to all of our attendees. And so if you want to come back and look over anything again, uh, that will be available for you uh, as well. Uh, Lachlan will also be posting a few links to some more information throughout the webinar if you want to go and find out a bit more about the features that we're looking at today. Uh, so quick recap of what we're going to be looking at. We've got... Now, uh, some new integrations, we've got Typeform and Magento integrations that are now live. We've got some updates to our reporting options, and we've got uh, an update for segment integration to allow outbound activities, uh, which we'll be covering all of those today. Um, as usual, there's more that we've released uh, throughout the month that we can't show today, but if you keep an eye on our uh, roadmap and our changelog, you'll be able to see those updates uh, as they come through. So I think we're ready to, to go. Um, it's great to, again, have you all with us today. Um, I'm going to be starting off with our Typeform integration. So I'll share my screen and we can get started. OK, so Typeform is a great application for building quizzes, surveys, registration forms, uh, all sorts of different uh, forms that you can use to capture information about your customers. And with our new integration, you can now have that form submission activity that comes from Typeform uh, sent directly into Auto so that you can use it with the rest of your data, build workflows with our journeys or playbooks to follow up to people who have submitted a, a type form, or perhaps you can use it after people have made a purchase of your product to send them a customized uh, type form link so that they can provide some feedback on the product they've just purchased. Uh, lots of great use cases, and we're already seeing lots of people sign up to use type form. So let's have a look at the details of how we do that. So I'm here on the data sources page. I'm going to add a new data source and come down and select type form. And go through the connection steps. I'll approve my uh, integration within type form. So, yep, that's all good. Select my merge strategy, just as we do for all other data sources. I'm happy with the default here. So that's what we do with the contacts that come through from the form submissions. Uh, okay, now the, the interesting part for your uh, for your type form connection is you're going to have a whole range of different forms that exist in type form and maybe you don't there might be certain ones that you want to bring into auto, others that aren't relevant. So on this page you're going to select the forms that you care about that you want to track. So for me the webinar sign up uh, is the one that I want to look at. And once you've uh, selected, oh, I can't map my fields, um, you can um, you can choose what fields you want to map. So uh, first name, last name, email address. Um, so I want to do first name and last name, email, so I'm just mapping the fields that are in my type form form into the CDP fields that I want to store for uh, keeping that, that data against. Uh, now I'm picking the industry that the people work in. So this is a, a webinar sign up. So I'm just interested to uh, gain a bit of information about the people that are signing up. So this is an industry field. How long have you been following us? Um, that's a integer field i'm going to um, record that uh, the next one is a referral so this is actually a hidden field within type form 
So if I have my uh, URL of my type form, uh, your uh, form, then I can put a hidden field in that URL, which might be something like a referral, or you could use it to pre-fill an email address, first name, the product that was purchased, for example, and then people don't have to answer that as a question, but the information is still stored and recorded through your type form submission. Uh, so here I have a referral. Now, I, I will be honest here, there is a bit of a bug at the moment in that I can't select these fields. So I might have to um, disconnect and, and try again to make this work, but I wanted to go through and explain uh, what those, how those fields worked um, in terms of what you, uh, what you, select um, and if you don't if you choose not to map anything um, on this page you will still get that information in the activity submission we just won't record it against a cdp field so that it will stay uh, in your account uh, long term so um, apologies that one is, is not there at the moment let me quickly jump back and try that again oh, it's still connecting the joys of um i will come back to that one let me um show you what that looks like for someone who has signed up in typeform so here was an example um, that i submitted uh, previously so they they have filled out a form and the the account was created uh, as a result um, and this one was for a basketball team sign up and so the information about their um, their basketball details were recorded uh, in here, such as the positions they want to play, uh, things like that. Um, that is our type form. So there is, there is a slight bug there at the moment, but I'll resolve that with our team straight after this call. Um, when you do integrate your type form data source, um, you will see that um, any existing submissions when you connect it will appear automatically as a record so any past submissions we backfill those so you will have this the activities of all the people that have already submitted and then any activities of people submitting after that point will come through and uh, you can come back and edit the forms afterwards if you want to add more forms you want to change what fields you are mapping for those forms you can do that as well uh, I'll quickly try and reconnect again, see if it's going to be a bit more well behaved this time. If not, we have an idea of how it should work. Um, here we go. So that's always a good hint. If something doesn't work, try it again. Um, so this time I can map the forms. It's pre-filled, the ones it could guess. I'll quickly update the other ones again. Industry uh, years following. And our referral. Okay, I'm just mapping to one form. Data retention. So if I want to store the activity for more than 90 days, uh, I can select this. Uh, for the moment, I'm happy without that. And then it will begin syncing. So at the moment, what this is doing is getting all of the backfill data. So any forms that have been submitted previously, going through and populating that data. Um, into our account and you'll get an email when that's complete my one's a small account so it's already done you can see i had a couple of records already who have filled out the forms um, here we have uh, james bond signed up a few days ago and their their details here um, let me go and fill out this form now we can see when it comes through as a live data so here i've got um on citizen, give it an email and let's pick a industry they work in e-commerce they've been following for two years and submit. And if you'd notice up in the URL, I've got the referral um, is Google. Okay, so that was just a, a simple form. Now back in type form, I can see when I fill out, uh, when I refresh the page a few times, 
within about a minute or two, that new activity will come through for the new person to be signed up. Um, I mentioned, yeah, if you want to go and change what forms you're looking at, come over here, you can add one that was unselected before, or perhaps you've added a new form into type form, uh, go through and map the fields accordingly. Uh, if you want to do that, perhaps you want to change the fields that you mapped for an existing form, you can do that as well. Change what field you're mapping to or stop mapping a field completely. Um, that will affect only records going forward, but uh, you can do that if you want. Let's see if that's come through yet. Um, yep, there we are. So uh, like our capture forms, you get a generic um, submission activity so that you can easily group all of the people who have submitted any of your type form forms, which is particularly handy if you have a lot of forms and uh, we can uh, group it or split it by the type of form they submitted as well as the specific submission activity with all the details of their actual submission. So that's a, that's a quick overview of our type form uh, integration. There is a blog with more details as well and another video you can watch. Uh, please try it out and let us know any feedback either with our support team or in the chat. Cool. Okay, moving along. Next up on our list is some reports updates. So uh, one of the things that have been highly requested for our reports is the ability to use your fields in your reports, not just activities. And this opens up a, a world of, of possibilities of what sort of reports you could build. Um, perhaps you can aggregate or group uh, activities that are coming through by a field, such as uh, what purchases people are making grouped by the, the type of account they have or how long they've been a customer, things like that. You could uh, look at um, you actually mapping the fields in, a, in different ways to see how those are changing over time and lots of things. I'll, I'll show you a few examples now to demonstrate some of the possibilities, but I'm sure you've uh, got, got plenty more that you could, you could use this for. So, on our reports page, let's jump in and create a new report. Now, the first one I'm going to create is a, uh, a column chart for if I have, say, I'm a SaaS company and I've got plan type as a field that I store for my, uh, for my contacts to indicate the type of plan that they have. And I want to track uh, how the relative sizes of each plan type changes over time. Okay, that, that's my use case. So I'm starting from scratch and I'm creating a column chart. So this is called customer plans. And you can see now I've got the option to not just add activities, but person fields or organization fields if my account has organizations enabled. So let's select our field it's called customer plan. And a few settings I need to change. I'm going to start by enabling my suppression filter so that my test accounts are included, which sometimes you don't want, but just to demonstrate what's happening. And I want to use total incremental to give me uh, the total counts on each day, not just the up, um, update. So total incremental. And at the moment, it's showing me how many people have a plan, but I actually want to group it by customer plan so that I can see how many people had each plan type on a given day. I'll zoom in a little bit so it's a bit easier to see. So just looking at the last seven days, uh, here we can see we've got bronze, silver, and gold, and I can look at what the, what the sizes of those different accounts are doing day by day. So here, for example, our bronze gone from five uh, about a week ago and is now up to eight and a nine and so on with bronze and sil uh, yeah, silver and gold. They've changed as well over the past week. Um, obviously, as you extrapolate with more data over a longer time, you'll see more significant changes. You might like to group it by week instead and look at a bit longer time. You can see um, you know, some more meaningful details, particularly when you combine this with maybe any ex external activities you've performed, such as, um, hey, we, we launched a sale giving a discount on the bronze plan. 
um, last week and we can see there was a significant impact of that result by looking at this report. So you can move those around as you need, but pretty helpful feature to look at those comparisons. Um, I will mention that to get this um, historical data about a field type, you do need to enable tracking on that field so that we know uh, what people had at what time because you are tracking the values as they change for that person. So you will need to enable that to get this ability to track fields historically. Um, a few variations of this you might like to look at. So maybe um, instead of customer plan, you might want, want to look at um, the, the price of those plans and uh, compare that by um, group that by, by plan type, perhaps. So here we can see, um, and I'm going to turn on the values. And actually, I want to look at the average of this field. So here I've got the, I'm looking at what is the average plan price for each customer plan um, over time. So I can see, for example, my gold plan in blue, um, average plan size is 850 down to 750, 813. Um, you can track those interesting data, uh, that interesting data over time as well. Um, perhaps there's another field you might want to look at, um, like if they've attended a webinar. I've just got a true or false there. Um, so I've got yes. If they did attend, what's the average value? And I want to actually group my unknown as well. And so here I can see what's the difference in plan price based on the people that attended the webinar or not. And you can see in this example, overwhelmingly stronger for those that have attended the webinar. Just a sample there of what you could do, uh, lots of potential. Um, now, going back to um, a, a previous report that I've created of that customer plans before I changed it all, um, you can see once you make the report dynamic, we now have an option to send notifications to Slack for that report. So um, you want to see what these plan types are doing over time, and you want to easily share that with your broader team. If you're using Slack, you can now have a report sent on a scheduled frequency into that channel. Uh, so here I've under reports, and again, it's only for dynamic because if it's a snapshot report, it's not changing. There's no point posting the same report multiple times. Uh, so here I've already turned my Slack notifications on for this particular report. I pick the channel that I want to report it to, pick the time frame that I want to show the report. So I might want a different uh, time frame in my Slack channel versus what I have on the report here. Pick a frequency between daily, weekly, or monthly, and then a few other options like what time. If you select monthly, you can choose uh, what what day of the month you want to send it and so on, include a bit of a message. Um, so I've chosen send it daily at 9 a.m., skip into weekends, and that will, will go through and, and do that. So I've got um, an example of what I've already set up. So uh, here you can see um, that was sent at 9 o'clock this morning, and you can see the, the report snapshot there. And obviously change that as you want, what you need for your team but a very quick and easy way to get that key data out to your team maybe you have a metric report that you're looking at new deals made this month uh, total value of products sold you can easily then have that sinking into your um, slack channels notify the team very easily um, one more report example i'll just show out again one that's already done to make it easier but is language preferences so I'll just edit to show you what we've done here. So here, uh, a few weeks ago, we launched um, a multi-language support for campaigns so that you could send out, set up the one campaign with support for different languages based on people's preferences so they could read the campaign in their own language. Uh, as we record people's language preferences by them interacting with your product, opening links, uh, et cetera, you'll over time grow a list of the preferences of people's languages. And so perhaps a report like this, which is a pie chart, 
um, looking at the language field grouped by language so I can see all the different types um, will be helpful to let you know what are the, what's my spread of languages across my audience. And at the moment, um, you can see um, Swedish and Spanish are pretty high. Uh, I've also got English in there. So one extra thing you might want to do is um, use a filter to say, actually, I don't want to exclude the people that um, have a language preference I already support. So maybe if my language is not uh, English US, I already support that. And let's say I already support French. So language is not French. I can, I can add this filter and now I exclude the languages I already support. So what I'm looking at is just the people um, who language I don't support just yet. And this will tell me over time um, what languages are most important for me to consider adding to my campaign based on my audience. So as just a couple of examples, how you can use these reports to create lots of interesting data. Um, please have a play around with it. Check out our blog. There's more information in there and reach out in our, in our chat. If you do have other questions, I can help you there as well. Um, that's it for, for my part of the webinar. So now I'm going to uh, hand over to Veronica and Veronica is going to um, take you through the rest of the webinar. So thanks, Veronica. Thank you, Pete. Hi, everyone. Let me share my screen first. Um, today, I will show you two new integrations, Magenta 2 Data Source and the Outbound integration with Segment. I would love to start with Magenta and show you the benefits you will get by using this data source. Um, Magenta is a well-known, highly customizable e-commerce platform. Merchants choose this platform as they can add a great variety of features to their online store. Currently, Magenta 2 data source is in beta and available for all Auto customers. Magenta 2 has numer numerous versions. Um, our integration was developed and tested for 2.4.2. In case you're using some other version and you want to integrate your auto account with your Magenta store, you will need to follow a few simple steps. First, run this command you see on your screens in your Magenta host. Complete the setup as it's uh, described in our um, guide. Try it out and send us your feedback. If something should be adjusted for your version, we will do it for you. Today, I will skip the setup part as uh, we're a bit limited in time, but you can find the detailed instruction in our doc, as I said. I will just mention that during setup, you will be able to choose the merge strategy that suits your case, um, increase data storage for activities, transfer your custom base from Magenta to order and use other advanced settings. Well, now um, let's skip to the good part. Let's talk about all those benefits, features and data you will get access to after connecting Magenta to. The integration allows you to track activities, create coupons, segment your customer base, send relevant campaigns to the right customers, build reports and dashboards, and even more possibilities. Um, you can um, let me just give you a few examples of how you can get the most out of this integration. Um, you can track all important customer actions with these 15 activities from back in stock, added to cart, order created and review created. You will be able to um, have all important data in your auto account. Use this data to create audiences, campaigns and build reports. 
As an example, I will create an audience for new customers from Australia. Uh, we can do it in people section or audience sex, uh, section. Let's go to the people section. And um, we need to select the following criteria. Order, created, let's choose frequency and time more than zero times in the last seven days. And country is Australia. Now we can save this people as audience. Let's call it new customers from Australia. And let's save it. Let's go to audiences. Yeah, now we have this new audience, audience with seven members. The next thing I want to show you is coupons. Our coupon management system is very flexible. You get the standard settings and also advanced settings like, um, for example, priority, um, with which you can decide on coupon priority in relation to other coupons. Or you can decide if you want um, this coupon to be shown in your ISS feed. Let's quickly create the coupon together for Halloween because um, we'll very soon then the, we will have to put our pumpkins in front of our house. Um, let's call it Boo22. Boo 22, let's make unique. Uh, I'm happy with this 10%. Um, I will keep it simple, but I want to add start and end date. Uh, let's, the start date will be the 29th of September and the sale will end on the 31st of October. Okay, let's create this coupon. Great. Um, now when we created a coupon, we can add this coupon to um, our Halloween sale campaign. Let me find it. We need to find the coupon. Yeah, it's here. This is what we need. I want to change the design a little bit. Yeah, I like it. I don't like the button. I will probably just yeah keep it simple. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Okay, save. Now um, we're ready to send this Halloween sale campaign to our customers. One more thing I want to show you here is our product um, widgets. One of the, to my mind, one of the best things about our e-commerce integrations are these uh, product widgets, widgets, because instead in instead of sending like just a plain simple campaign, um, you you can use this product widgets and send the relevant products to your customers. For example, products they were interested uh, in, but they have not completed the checkout for some reason, or you want to send them uh, products. Uh, they uh, from their last order maybe they want to reorder them yeah the, there are a lot of um, different options here and now when we created campaign um, we want to measure the success of our campaigns you can also build uh, reports and dashboards i won't show it to you because uh, pete has uh, shown it uh, before and um, I think with those amazing updates uh, Pete walked you through uh, before, it, it will become even easier to visualize uh, all important data. And um, that's it for uh, Magenta. And I think uh, Lachlan already shared the uh, help documentation. Uh, if you want to learn more, just follow the link. We provided all information there. Now we're ready to go to segment. 
um, a lot of our customers have been waiting for the segment outbound integration i think since the day we released segment uh, segment data source almost a year ago and um we the thing is that um segment doesn't support source apis uh, at the moment we we could not create the data uh, stream from order to segment However, we knew how important it was for our customers um, to not, not only receive the data from Sigmund, but also send important marketing data from order to Sigmund and further to the analytical tools. And we found this solution for you. And I'm happy um, to present our brand new outbound Sigmund integration through the Sigmund compliant webhooks. But um, before showing you how to set uh, how to set up segment webhooks, I would like to share some exciting news with you. As we release one more data stream type, we decided to increase the number of data streams on business plan. Now, instead of one data stream, you will have three data streams included in your business plan. This is a shared limit for webhooks and segment webhooks. Um, now we're ready to create our first segment stream. Let's just call it new event. We can use the same name for track event name, new event. Uh, we need right key to get this right key. We uh, will go to our segment account, we need to add a new source, find HTTP API, click next, uh, name your source, I will just add author, create source. And now we have this key we need, copy the key, click next, and just save this source. Add the key here, and now we can test this webhook. We need to press test, go back to segment, debugger section. Hmm. Let me reload it. Yeah, you see, we have this uh, test event with all uh, the information. And now um, we can save our webhook. Um, I will quickly show you where you can use these webhooks. The first one will be activities. Um, let's add this webhook to the edit to cart activity. Now, when you, um, now when I receive these activities in my account, they will also be sent to a uh, segment. We also um, added segment webhook as an action uh, to playbook and journeys. You can add it here, select, send to segment webhook, choose the webhook you need. Yeah, now we have this uh, webhook as an action in playbooks. Um, now, when we know how to add segment um, data stream, let's test it. As you remember, I added the data stream to edit to card as I just don't want to 
use some random activity. I started my presentation with magenta and it's just one more reason to uh, go shopping. It's always fun, right? And now we want to test it. We will add, I will go to my store and I will add a few items to the card. Um, as it's getting warmer here in Australia, I need something for summer. Um, I what I like here, I like this one. I will choose blue because it's my favorite color. I will add it to card. Um, also, I like this one because it's black and black is such a such a happy color, right? Uh, let's add it too. And let's add some shorts. Oh, I have just well, I, I can order shorts for my partner. He will like this one. Now, um, yeah, well, see size. Yeah, let's add this shorts. Hmm. Okay. Now, when now when we um, edit a few items to the card, we need to check that we receive these activities. Our order account. Yeah, I can see items I order. Uh, I added to the card, and let's check if we have these events in segment yes now i can see uh new events with all the information on these activities even like product id um, the um, cart url everything all the information on uh, this uh, activity and um yeah that's it for today we hope you enjoyed it and we can't wait for you to try all these new features and give us your feedback in case of any questions please contact our support team and uh, thank you